aku kan aku memang tak puas hati tu dengan ciri yang seorang tu Anin tu kan kan yang ni yang hujung ni ha. Ya Allah di tempat dia kotor teruk kau tahu tak eh, kotor teruk lah kau aku, aku, aku okey dengan dia aku hari tu setelah hari aku lambat lah buat you hmm. tak member tu pergi cirit lah like, depan dorm hmm. aku pula kena masuk yeah. teruk gila yeah. hey, teruk Allah. sumpah lah dia Serius tak? Dia tu yang pendek tau Kena kena bantai eh, Yang kita ni so, eh. Aku pun aku pun kalau, kalau dia ada kat depan aku Aku memang dah lama dah macam tu Aku Yalah. tak boleh betul lah orang Boleh dia orang oh. macam ni ni Memang kena ajar tu ni Tak biar eh dia, dia tu dah makin Dia tak Dia Sedap pun dia bersih Dia tu orang dia punya senior Dia tak boleh buat macam tu Ya tu Apa dia orang ni? Kita dari dunia dia kena lah Kena hormat Okay lah kita kena Tak tahu kan aku perempuan study semua Ni asal ni Tak ada perempuan Aku orang aftest lah Aku dengar nama aku orang aftest sekarang Take kursi masuk Kau tahu orang aftest? Tahu tahu bang tahu Haa Raja sikit Kau aftest bagi betul lah Ha? Kau macam nak mati aftest Ladies and gentlemen Last May this year That is exactly the illustration on what happened In one of the religious boarding school in Ilai Negeri Sembilan Three students of this school were claimed to have been beaten up by their own senior. Nilai District Police Chief Superintendent Muhammad Fazli Abdul Rahman said, Police received three reports from the victims, all of whom are Form 2 students, on that subject matter. They alleged that they were assaulted by Form 4 students which resulted in them suffering bodily injuries. And sadly, all three sought outpatient treatment at the Tunku Jafar Hospital. And what is more sad is that all of them are someone's son or brother to their family. Therefore, throughout this documentary video, we, we will cover the issue of trespass to person, especially from the aspect of assault and battery from the point of view of first case law, the summary of general article regarding trespass to person, and the whole legal analysis regarding of the problem. To begin with, let's get to know who is the speakers for this video documentary. So the speakers for this video documentary consists of me, Brother Muhammad Admin, next the case review which will be discussed by Brother Faris Mustaqim, and in the general article reviewed by Brother Luqman Hakim and to wrap up regarding legal analysis by Brother Aman Afifi. Without further ado, let's begin with the case law by Brother Faris Mustaqim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Faris Mustaqim bin Zulkarnai. My metry number is 2110351. So I'm going to continue for the second part which is to summarize and analyze two case laws relating to the topic relevant under Malaysian law. So for the first is Tiong Pik Hyong and Wong Siu Giu. So the summary of the facts in this case is that the defendant, driven by violent jealousy resulting from the plaintiff's association with her husband, attacked the plaintiff, scratched her face, neck and arm, thereby causing her injury. And the plaintiff claimed damages for battery. So it was, it was decided in this case that after taking into consideration the pain and suffering undergone by the plaintiff, a temporary loss followed by a temporary diminishment of her good looks and loss of amenities, the sum of 550 ringgit should be awarded as general damages. So moving on to the next slide, which is for the judgment of this case. So um, the, the court stated that the plaintiff is an infant, age 17, swing to her mother and next friend. The claim is for special and general damages for battery. She alleges that on 29 of August 1963, the defendant, which is a woman, attacked her on the first floor of number 50 Central Road Cebu at the foot of the staircase coming down from the second floor on which is the Sarawak Ladies Dressmaking Institute where she then was and now is learning dressmaking. So she says that the defendant scratched her on her face, neck and arm, causing her pain and suffering and leaving her with permanent injuries and visible marks on her face. So she claims special damages of 46 ringgit and must therefore be claiming in general damages such an amount as to bring the claim to over 3,000 ringgit. So this statement of defense is a short one and may be conveniently set out in this judgment. So it reads as follows that the first one, the defendant contends that there were only superficial abrasions and all scratches sustained by the plaintiffs, plaintiff and the defendant, however, admits having assaulted the plaintiff at the alleged place and on the date mentioned. So, 
In her evidence, the defendant denied that she scratched the plaintiff but admitted that she beat her up. So she did not go as far as to say that she was in such a state of rage and jealousy as to be actually insane. But she did say that the plaintiff and her husband had been associating with each other, having an affair and that because of the plaintiff, her husband had been treating her badly. So in evidence, the defendant was vague and rather contradictory as to where she beat the plaintiff. So there was some information distorted by the defendant where two of them met. So furthermore, McGillan Justice stated that there is no doubt that defendant scratched the plaintiff quite badly on the face and also scratched her on the neck and arm. I am satisfied that the defendant intended to scratch and inflict injury on the plaintiff but I do not accept it as proved even as a matter of probability and that she intended to spoil permanently the plaintiff's face. So the fact of her jealousy does not all excuse the defendant's action but it is relevant on the question whether there is any ground for mitigating of damages and also on the question whether exemplary damages should be given. So the plaintiff claims uh, 46 ringgit as special damages where Mike Gillen Justice allows for only hospital charges of 10 ringgit, taxi fare on the 29th of August to the police station and to the hospital and home which is only 4 ringgit and for the chicken essence as a medical tonic and special convulsion food which is uh, 26 ringgit 50 cents. So the court awarded 40 ringgit 50 cents as special damages. So moving on to the next slide which is um, the claim of general damages where there is no doubt the plaintiff was quite nicely scratched on the face which the photographs shows that and she must have suffered some pain from them and the swelling which they caused. So the scratches on her arms and neck must also have caused some pain. So I consider that she must also have had some mental suffering through embarrassment at her parents and through fear that her good looks were ruined. So she is entitled to damages for pain and suffering. So McGillian Justice also added that the plaintiff still has visible on her left cheek four small reddish scars or marks which are undoubtedly the results of the defendant's scratching. So I cannot regard these scars as permanent injuries. They are obviously much less noticeable now and they were two and a half months ago. So the doctor who gave evidence for the plaintiff said that the scars will go away in two or three years that and that they may remain for two or three years. So also, it has not been suggested and it does not appear to the court that she has been psychologically affected in any way because she, ha she has not been made shy or afraid of people. And she went back to the dressmaking institute a month after she received the injuries. And also, her marriage prospects have also have been in no way diminished. So therefore, the plaintiff is entitled to damages for pain and suffering and for a temporary loss of part of amenities of life. Obviously, only a very small part of the damages should be for loss of amenities. So the main part must be for pain and suffering, which the doctor said her pain would have been minimal, but a doctor's standard of comparison in such a matter must be different from the layman's. The first day, the plaintiff must have suffered very definite pain. Uh, so I do not think even then it could be said to have been severe pain. There is no reason to believe that healing progress other than normally and the pain must have diminished day by day and have completely gone by at the most 10 days after any injuries were inflicted. Uh, so she did not have to stay in hospital or go to bed. So coming to cause order 65 out of the, of the rules of Supreme Court read as follows. Well, if any suit is bought in the High Court, which would have been within the jurisdiction of a subordinate court, or in which the plaintiff recovered a sum for which judgment could have been recovered in the subordinate court, the plaintiff shall not be entitled to any more cause than he would have been entitled to if the proceedings had been bought in a subordinate court. So, unless in any such suit a judge certifies that there was sufficient reason for bringing the suit in the High Court. So, McGillan Justice also added that the judgment could have been given for 490 ringgit 50 cents in a second class magistrate court. And I'm not going to give any such certificate 
as is to refer to in the rule. Even if there was no such rule, I should have allowed only like cost. And I propose to fix this amount under the general discretion of the court as to cost. I award the plaintiff 250 ringgit in cost. Move on to the second case, which is Abdul Manan bin Hassan and Hassan bin Mansum and others. Where the summary of the facts is that the appellant and one more Ali were remanded for being suspected to be involved in a fight with a policeman. Both the appellant and Mom Ali brought separate civil suits against the respondents for assault and false, in false imprisonment. So, before the commencement of the trial between the appellant and the respondents, it was agreed between them that the decision of a high court in Mom Ali's suit, which was heard first, would bind them on the issue of liability for false imprisonment. So, at the conclusion, at the conclusion of Muhammad Hadi's suit, the trial judge allowed the claim for assault but disallowed his claim for false imprisonment. So, on appeal, the Court of Appeal overturned the decision of High Court and allowed Muhammad Hadi's appeal for false imprisonment. However, in the present case, the learned High Court judge disallowed the appellant's claim for false imprisonment. So, the appellant then appealed to this court. So, it was decided in his case that um, the court allowed the appellant's appeal and set aside the high court's decision which is the respondents were stopped from denying liability for the wrongful detention of the appellant as they had agreed to be bound by the court's decision on liability in the moment had issued. So therefore, although the learning judge was not bound by the decision of court of appeal in Muhammad had issued, the parties were bound by the agreement between themselves. Since the respondents in the Muhammad Hadi suit had been found to be liable for false imprisonment by the court, the respondents were also liable to the appellant for false imprisonment. So, moving on to the second slide, which is for the judgment. It was being judged that this appeal by the appellant was confined on the issue of liability for false imprisonment. In the early hours of 22 November uh, 2008, the appellant and one Mahdi were arrested and brought to Malacca Police Headquarters to assist in a police investigation into a fight that took place at Zubaydi Restaurant, MTC Malacca, on 21st of November 2008 at about 11.45 p.m. So, the fight was between some members of the public and a policeman. The appellant was suspected to be involved in the fight. The information that the police had on the appellant was that um, he was the gang leader of a secret society code named Gang 77. So thereafter, the appellant and Muhammad Hadi were remanded in police custody for a period of 14 days on the order of a magistrate. So subsequently, they brought several civil suits against respondent for assault and false imprisonment. Before the commencement of a trial between the appellant and the respondents, it was agreed between them that the decision of the High Court in Muhammad Hadi's suit, which was had first, would bind them on the issue of liability for false imprisonment. So at the conclusion of the trial of the suit brought by Muhammad Hadi, the learned trial judge allowed his claim for assault but disallowed his claim for false imprisonment. On appeal, however, this court overturned the High Court's decision and allowed Muhammad Hadi's appeal for false imprisonment and maintained the judgment for assault. So given this agreement by the parties and pending decision of the federal court, this court decision in the Muhammad Hadi's appeal should bind the respondents on the issue of liability for false imprisonment in this suit brought by the appellant. Moving on to the next slide where the learned judge however did not allow the appellant's claim for false imprisonment. He only allowed the appellant's claim for assault and awarded general damages in the sum of 80,000 ringgit in addition to 50,000 ringgit for aggravated damages and another 50,000 ringgit for exemplary damages making a grand total of 180,000 ringgit. So, the learned judge's reason for not awarding damages to the appellant for false imprisonment is that he found that the plaintiff had indeed been called for the purpose of investigating his involvement in a fight at restaurant Zubaida MITC Melaka. Meanwhile, Muhammad Hadi was found to be following the plaintiff. So, it was found and determined that the arrest and detention of the plaintiff by the police was lawful and complied with the requirements of the law. So, the appellant argued for disallowing his claim for false impris imprisonment using the case of Tan Gyok Lan and La Kuan or Lian Kuan. So, it was stated in this case that with due respect, we do not agree because to our mind, if the party had chosen and agreed as to the manner of resolving the dispute between them, they will have to bear with whatever is the outcome. So, the threshold question is whether there was a binding agreement between the parties to settle the dispute in that manner. 
So for the answer to this question, the learned judge, the learned trial judge will have to conduct the proceedings as a force. And if the agreement is found to be binding, the dispute can be solved in the manner as agreed to by the parties and the case can be disposed of expeditiously, thus saving time and cost. So since the respondent in Muhammad Hadi suit had been found to be liable for false imprisonment by the court, it must follow until the decision is reversed by the federal court that respondents are also liable to the appellant for false imprisonment. So then they agree to be bound by decision and they must Bye bye. I'm Lukman Hakim, and now I will be discussing the summary of the article titled Bullying Ministry of Education's Big Time Failure. So, in this article, the author talks about school bullying, which continues to be a problem despite decades of attempts by the authorities to halt it. In Langkawi, police arrested 13 Form 4 students on April 28 following a report lodged by their schoolmate, also a Form 4 student, that he had been assaulted. Last December 14, it was reported that Mak Tak Brenda Sainz Mara Sultan Adlan Shah Kuala Kangsa uh, has expelled 10 students for bullying a fellow student. According to the 2017 uh, uh, health survey by the health ministry, 16.2% of the country's teenagers were involved in bullying. Most disturbing is that some of the students have died due to bullying. For instance, um, a student of SMK Bandar Rinchang died after drinking pesticides in February 2014. It was because he could not take the bullying by fellow students. On top of that, another case is the, the one and only the case that most Malaysian will remember it. The case of Navy Cadet Zulfarhan Osman Zulkarnain uh, fro, uh, from injuries after being bullied at National Defence University UPNM on May 22, 2017. On November 2, 2021, the High Court sentenced six students of UPNM to 18 years jail for causing the death of Zulfarhan. The thing is, the ministry cannot be accused of not doing anything. Ministry of Education Razi Jidin had introduced the Sekolahku Sejahtera concept to cultivate values uh, of life among ch school children uh, through curricular and co-curricular activities, establishing a reporting channel for bullying from the schools to the ministry spell out punishments for bullying and get school heads, teachers and wardens to better monitor students' activities. The same call was made by uh, Deputy Education Minister Tio Ni Ching on November 20, 2019 at the gathering of 40 students mentioned above. She regretted that some schools were not reporting instances of bullying to protect their image. As can be seen, the Education Ministry has proposed and enforced ma many measures to tackle discipline including bullying over the last five decades. Campaigns, spot checks, hotlines, crime prevention clubs, police monitoring, moral studies, Islamic studies, fines for misbehavior and threats of expulsion have been tried. Obviously, the Education Ministry has fail big time, although it may not be one for trying. Uh, perhaps education officials have not tried hard enough to Im implement their plans. One thing that the author has noticed over the years is that school administrators tend to bury or play down bullying and other acts of discipline. Also, the author adds that he noticed that each new education minister and each new director general has his or her own priorities. They want to stamp their mark and so push agendas or projects that are different from those of their predecessors. Therefore, there is no continuity even for workable programs. My name is Amal Vivi B.M. Aziz and now I would like to present about the analysis of the overall. Okay, firstly, I would like to talk about the opinion on the problem that have identified. In our opinion, Assault issue is an issue that the government have taken many steps to curb it. For an example, in the article, the Education Minister has drawn up a comprehensive framework 
to address bullying with a focus on awareness, reporting, sentencing, and monitoring. However, until this day, there still there are still a lot of students who do not know about the consequence of the bully, which can be resulted into assault and battery. A more pragmatic a, a, a more pragmatic step that the Malaysian government can take is through early disclosure of laws related to bullying. This can also provide an early phase of warning to students so that they are more aware of the punishment that will be received if they violate the, that law that which has been set. Okay, the next thing that we'll discuss is whether our laws are sufficient to handle the problem. According to the section 351 of the Penal Code, it stated that whoever makes any gesture or any preparation, intending or knowing it to be likely that such gesture or preparation will cause any person present to apprehend that he who makes the gesture of preparation is about to use criminal force to that person is said to commit an assault. The explanation for this section is mere words do not amount to an assault by the words which a person use may give to his gesture of preparation such a meaning as may make those gesture of preparation amount to an assault. It shows that the penal code is, su is sufficient to handle problem uh, that can be related with assault. Moreover, the punishment for assault range range also quite wide which are from 3 months to 10 years depending on the peculiarity and severity of the case as stated from the section 352 until the section of 358 of the penal code showing that our law already covers all aspects regarding of assault and the last part we will cover is whether we should follow which country for reform in our opinion we should follow the united states to reform our assault to reform the assault case, the assault provision of 18 U.S.C. 351 Clause Subsection E divides assault into two categories: those that result in personal injury, which are punishable by 10 years of imprisonment, imprisonment at the fine, and all others injury, which are punishable by one year of imprisonment and the fine. The applicable fine is someone is determined by the provision of 18 U.S.C. 3571 in the United States, it is a crime to walk up to someone and hit them without their permission. What can our legal frame, what can our legal framework do is that we can try to clear up the provision regarding assault in Malaysia by not dividing it into too much categories so that we, as the layman, can understand it clearly, clear, thus reducing the problem of assault in the country. We can refer on what United States had done as United States country has a better and clear provision that will make all of the citizen understand of the punishment for an assault case. So that's all from us. Thank you.